Hello and welcome to part 4 of the Python for Finance tutorial series and in this one we're going to cover the relative strength index technical indicator. So what is it? Well, if I have to describe it in one sentence, I would say that it's an indicator that shows the momentum related to a particular asset. So if that relative strength index is too high, it means that that asset is being overbought, which means that in the recent past it kept going up. So it's expected that it starts to decline a bit. The other way around, if the relative strength index is very low, it means that the stat price kept going down. So now it's expected that it increases in the near future. So we're in order to basically understand that, we need to make a few calculations up front, and we're going to do that in this tutorial. So the relative strength index, the, the reason it's called that way is because it compares the relative strength. Now what it what, what does it actually compare is the average gain in the past X days compared to the average loss in the same period. If you if the stock price went out up a lot then that average gain would be much higher therefore it would be overbought the other way around being oversold. So looking at the code from the previous tutorial we're not going to use a lot we're going to start from scratch um, I'm going to leave this first two lines because they're related to getting the initial data. And the next, what we're going to do is the following. We did work with the absolute, with a relative change in the past to compare the increased change um, of the price. However, now we're interested in the absolute so we can compare the, these average gains and losses over time. So what we're going to do is first we're going to create an absolute change column, um, which basically what would it would be equal to is data adjusted close dot diff one. Let's maybe start um, test it with, with just one ticker. Let's use Coca-Cola for an example. Um, and We'll test it as we go and let's just to make sure that our code works and that we don't have to go back to make a lot of changes. So now we, we have our absolute change, which is just the, the adjusted close of today minus the adjusted close of yesterday. We know in this column whether the price of whatever we have went up or down. However, if we want to compare, we need to know and we need to make a, a bit of a different distinction. So what we're going to do is we're going to have data up or positive movement or whatever you want to call it, which would be equal to one if data.lock i absolute change is greater than zero, else zero for i in data.index. So this data up would have one for every day that the change in the price was greater than zero. So we had a positive change. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to use the same for a down movement or a decrease, except now we would have one whenever the price went down. So if we had it below zero and let's maybe print data dot tail so the last 10 results, just to make sure that this part of the code works for us. And maybe we can, um, all right. So, August 24, the price was 47.58, then it decreased to 47.52. So this is the absolute change. And as you can see, it was a down movement. So it was a decrease in the price. Basically in these two last columns, we would have one or a zero at one or the other. Great, but we can't compare them based on the whether the movement was positive or negative because we also need to know the impact of that movement because if you if, if a stock price went up for five percent and went down for two percent apparently that's not the same so what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, maybe up down um, let's say positive movement which would be equal to data up multiplied so this is again one or a zero multiplied by the absolute change so what we would get here is if the data, if, if the price went up, we would just get the absolute change. If it didn't, we would get a zero. And we would do the same for negative movement 
and it would be down multiplied by the uh, absolute change. Um, what I would like to do here is I'm going to multiply it by minus one so we have a positive value there because otherwise we it would be when, when comparing we would always have a negative result. Maybe here we can do absolute with lowercase so we are we always have the lowercase just so we're consistent. All right. So now we know the positive movement, but if we take a look at a particular row, we either have a positive movement or a negative movement, right? So what we need to do is we need to create some sort of an average over time. So that's the next part that we're going to do. We're going to create an average, um, we can say average positive movement, but let's, let's use the term gain. I think it's a shorter one. So that would be equal to the positive movement that we have dot rolling and then in the brackets here you would have the number of trading days so let's start with 14 dot mean and we're going to use the same so we have the average gain let's use average loss which would be the negative movement again rolling over time now if we compare the two we would get the relative strength. So data, average gain divided by data, average loss is basically an indicator of um, whether, which one was higher in a way. However, it can be five, it can be uh, 0.1, it can be as high and as low as, as possible. It's not really standardized within given boundaries. So what we do is we create a relative strength index. And what this does is it creates this relative strength and it standardizes between zero and a hundred. So it can go as low as zero and it can go as high up as 100. And the formula for that is 100 minus 100 divided by one plus data relative strength. Let's get the data dot tail. So the last 10 results, just to make sure that so far our formulas work, or maybe we have some error that we need to fix. All right, that looks good. So as you can see, the relative strength index is between zero and hundred. Um, we have 64, 59 and so on. So basically above 50 means that we are more towards the, the gain side or we've had more positive movements um, impact wise compared to, to the negative one. So the average gain in that period was higher than the average loss. Now what we're going to do is let's first plot just to make sure that that it looks well and then we can see if we can if it shows some information that we can trade on so i'll leave two axes the first one we're going to use for the price and the second one would be for the relative strength so it would be seven by one so seven rows one column that's fine we can leave that as it is on the first one we're going to leave just the price so this information from the previous tutorial we're going to remove on the second one we would plot data RSI the label would be RSI uh, the third one we don't have anymore and so this label would be after the second one we don't need the legend for the third one as well so that should be quite simple. Uh, one more thing we're going to add, we want to visualize at what point this relative strength index goes below, let's say 20 or 30. So some people use 20, 80 as indicators for a particular asset being overbought or oversold. Um, others use, so it's 20, 80 or 30, 70. I'm going to use, let's use 80, 20. So AX2 dot AX, H line, so a horizontal line at 80. The line style would be dash dot and the color, let's use color black. And the same at 20. So let's see how this works for Coca-Cola and if we get some, some meaningful insights or maybe not. All right. So this is what we have at the moment. I'm going to zoom this in so we have more information. Now, as you can see uh, in, in at many 
times the stock price went up above the the 80 relative strength index or below the 20 and the question is can you capitalize on this so let's use let's select this part when when there was a large price drop and let's see what the the, the, the rsi indicator signaled at that time so basically in this case um the relative strength index was probably around 90 and right after that the stock price decreased from about 44 to below 40 so maybe this is just an example of um, how you can use that let's uh, let's find another case because one of course one example is not enough this large drop on the right side now as you can see here the stock um, did drop again from around 55 50, 58 to quite low to 36 in in a few months um, the relative strength index went above 80 for a bit but this was somewhere in in January and it took about two months for the price to drop so it, it was not quite a timely signal it took a bit of time uh, from that moment on um, however if you did use the 30 and 70 probably this signal would have been much earlier even um, so basically that's the, the logic behind it so you would you would sell if the relative strength index is above the 80 as the stock price is expected to go down um, let's see an example when it went down so let's see this one here we have uh, an, an example when the so we do have a small decrease maybe that's not that high so it went down from 35 to 33 and then it started increasing so it could be that this is also a signal the, the, the difficult part about this is that the relative strength index um, let's actually run this again the, the 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 signals that you get are not that often because not that often the stock price has these large um, movements so let's take a look at coca-cola and this is for for a bit over five years now if you only bought at this point and hold it up until here you would have gained probably this part which is a which is a good return however you would have missed all these other parts so if you want to backtest this as a strategy you should not take only these um, peaks so only these high points and low points but you should take a lot more stocks to analyze at the same time because it doesn't mean that you would not be investing at anything for example at this entire period only because the relative strength index is not above 80 or below 20 it means that this strategy means that you would be investing in some other asset that has a relative strength index above or below but often this is being used in combination with other technical indicators not as the only one now what i prefer using it for is not to make a decision to trade but to have a feeling of how the market feels regarding um, a particular stock but also about the market in general so what is the sentiment of the market so what are we going to do in this case well let's create results which would be equal to pd dot data frame which would have only two columns we have the ticker and we have the relative strength index so that's it we have an empty data frame that has tickers and relative strength index only two columns now here we have some tickers um, i'm going to add say bank of america actually that's fine so let's let's use it as this and for every ticker in tickers this is what we're going to do we don't longer need a ticker we're going to do all this up to the plotting part so we don't really want to plot maybe i can um, get i'll comment this part out we don't want to see the the plots for every time we for every ticker instead this is what we want to do we would get the the relative strength index for all those five or ten or fifty or, or s p 500 if you if you want to do so and we're going to create a new row that new row would be a dictionary 
the ticker would be ticker and the RSI would be data RSI minus one. So it would be the the last data point that we have regarding the RSI, which is the, from the last, basically the last 14, based on the last 14 trading days. So we can even um, make this time frame a bit shorter. We can just use 2020. So it's, it's just nine months. It, we probably just need one month, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Now this new row that we have, we're going to add to our results. So the, our empty data frame now would have results.append new row and let's ignore the index. So that would be equal to true. Now let, let this run. And basically what we should expect is we have an RSI, so relative strength index for these six uh, companies. And they would all be stored into these results data frame. And if we print results, uh, oh, ticker, so we have capital. So this one should be capital T. So we have the same one. Let's run again. But you already see the point that we get some feeling about the market, at least how it feels per stock, or we can also do that on average. So we have the ticker, we have the RSI, um, again, you can go through all the S&P 500. If, if you feel that that provides more value, you can go over a particular industry. You can compare industries. But the results would, would be something like this. So this is the relative strength index from Apple, of Coca-Cola. And as you can see, they are quite similar. They, they don't differ that much. So maybe, maybe this way you can find some stock that's an outlier that might go towards the other stocks or the other way. Um, around that it's it's too high and that might reverse a bit uh, based on this but again I would I would not advise anyone to just trade based on this this is this is an indicator it's not some often there are good reasons why the, these uh, the relative strength index has gone up so much or has went uh, or went down for for quite some time um, that would be all regarding this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions or comments leave them in the question below comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.